We're solving problem 432a in Griffith's introduction to quantum mechanics. We need to find the eigenvalues and eigenstates of a certain operator. The operator is SY. It measures the spin in the y direction. And uh, when you measure spin, you can only get up or down. That's a fundamental fact of quantum mechanics. So in the basis that which we always use, where the spin up of C is one zero and the spin down is zero one. This spin up and down vector for the y direction is given by something called the Bloch sphere or the Henri Poincaré sphere, where the arrow pointing straight up from the center is defined to be the state of spin up in the c direction. And similarly for the x and y directions. So any given state of spin can be defined by the angles theta and phi in the Henri Poincaré sphere. So to write out the uh, vector for the spin-up state in the y direction, you'll have to look at the Henri Poincaré sphere and see what the state looks like in that. Plug in the angles theta and phi, and then in that way you can write out any quantum spinner for a spin one half particle. And if you do this for the state that we're interested in here, uh, namely the spin-up and spin-down state in the y direction, you'll get this um, you'll get this vector with the uh, one over square root two and i over square root two. That's the spin-up state in the y direction. Writing out the eigen equation for this, um, you'll get, you'll find that the eigenvalue is just h bar over two, and obviously the eigen states are just the vectors that represent the spin-up in the y direction. Now, for the spin down in the y direction, you'll do the same thing. Write out the operator acting on the vectors, and you'll find that the eigenvalue for the operator acting on the spin down state is just the same as before, but with a minus sign in front. So once again, just to write it out, if you measure the spin in the y direction, which is really what it means to use the SY operator, the only things that you can get is spin up and spin down in the y direction. Now the eigenvalues, if you do this, are possibly h bar over two or minus h bar over two. Those are the eigenstates and the eigenvalues. Now as a bonus, I'll show you how you could have arrived at this result without using the Bloch sphere. Generally, when you have an eigenvalue equation like this, you can ask what's the eigenvalue by doing some linear algebra. You can start by specifying your operator, uh, writing out what that is, and then specifying the general state where the coefficients of your vector are alpha and beta. Now, since multiplying by the identity matrix is equal to doing nothing, we'd like to do that to make the problem more symmetrical on both sides of the equation. We can now subtract the entire right-hand side from both sides, making the right-hand side zero. Now you can factor out the vector from the left-hand side to make a new matrix operator. When you've done this, you need to find the value of lambda that makes the determinant of the matrix operator zero, because then you will have found the matrix that acts on the state, making it into zero. Now, when you compute the determinant of the matrix and set it equal to zero, you'll get this quadratic uh, polynomial, which you'll have to solve. I won't go into detail about how to solve this uh, quadratic equation. I'll just tell you that the two roots are plus h bar over 2 and minus h bar over 2. These are the two eigenvalues you can get if you measure spin in the y direction. Now let's try and solve for the eigenstates. Once again, you'll set the right hand side to 0 and then factor out the vectors on the left hand side, making a new matrix. This time we can pick one of the eigenvalues that we've gotten and then put it in. Let's just try and go with lambda plus. If you plug in lambda plus and then do some matrix multiplication, you'll get something that represents a linear system of equations that you can solve. Let us now try and isolate b in the bottom equation. So far, so good. Now we know what beta is in terms of alpha. But in order to make further progress, we'll need to use the fact that the state has to be normalized. That is, the inner product with itself has to be 1. Taking the inner product in direct notation means taking the state and then taking the Hermitian conjugate, the dagger of it, and then multiplying that by the state itself. That's the inner product. This is what needs to be one in order for it to be a physically realistic quantum state. The Hermitian conjugate of a state like this is just a matter of taking the state and putting it onto its side and then complex conjugating all the components. Not surprisingly, writing it out, you'll see that in the end, it gives you that the absolute square of alpha plus the absolute square of beta needs to be one. And we can now replace beta with what we found it to be in the bottom equation down here. And we're now in a position to actually find out what alpha is. It turns out alpha is one over square root of two, and then you can use that to find out what beta is simply by multiplying by i 
as per the bottom equation down here. And obviously now we have both the components in our eigenstates, so we both know what the eigenstate is and the eigenvalue of that state. So we now have the eigenstate that we call spin up in the y direction. To find the spin down in the y direction, you'll just need to use the uh, lambda minus eigenvalue and do the same thing. I can tell you now that it's uh, exactly the same as the spin up state, uh, except for the fact that it's complex conjugated. So the beta component in that would just be minus i over the square root of 2.